Life is rough. You gotta take the time to focus on what brings you joy. As the Japanese say, ikigai. Or, what am I nerding out about right now? <laughs> Join us at the gaming table. Or reading nook. To find your happiness. I'm Lainey. I'm Marshall. And this is Elated Geek. Hello, everybody. Hello. I am Marshall. And I'm Lainey. And we are back from a vacation. Kind of, yes. <laughs> a staycation, yeah. Yes. You know, especially at this time in the world, mm -hmm. having a staycation is a pretty nice thing, especially if you're itching to go traveling and can't. Yeah. But we are lucky because we live in Orlando, which is where everyone wants to go anyway, so we have maybe some tips and ideas of things that you can do if you're in the local area. Yeah. Uh, we had been doing some looking earlier on in the year about like doing a real vacation somewhere else mm -hmm. in another state. But the more research we did into it, the harder it got as it was like COVID really shut these places down. Mm -hmm. And they were, they were turning people away at the borders in some cases. Um, I don't know if that's still the case, but we decided to do this staycation at Universal Orlando's Endless Summer Dockside Inn and Suites. Now, I will give you full disclosure. I do work for Universal Orlando, but I will not be giving you any information that you cannot already find online or in person or anything mm -hmm. like that. I did pay for this hotel yes. visit. I did get the employee rate because I am an employee, but I did pay for it. They're not paying me to say any of these things, okay? But just know I do work for them. <laughs> full disclosure. Yeah. Yeah, we will not ever try and give you information here that is skewed in the favor of somebody else. We're going to give you our unfettered opinion. And even if someone's paying us, they're going to pay us for that unfettered opinion. Correct. Uh, so, so we are not only going to talk about our experience in a staycation during the time of COVID. We will talk a little bit about our review of the hotel. But if you're looking for that, we do have a video on my YouTube, on Zany Laney YouTube, and on the Zany Laney Instagram that came out on Friday. Mm -hmm. So you can go check out our review with some pictures there if you are interested in knowing more about what the hotel was like. And going to a hotel uh, in your local area, at least in the Orlando area, has turned out to be a really great way for us to just kind of get away. Right. Primarily getting away from just the, the bottledness of our home. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are feeling that these days. It's going stir crazy. Correct. How did you come up with this idea of doing the staycation that you've really helped us out with for years now? Right. So when my husband and I got married back in 2005, we actually worked for a couple of like camps that were year round there was one that was up near california that was up near like fresno mm -hmm. there was one that was down near san diego near camp pendleton and in both of those cases we decided that because we were pretty much poor during that time every year for our anniversary we would go to a local hotel and uh, we would find a different one almost every time and we would just stay for a night sometimes two, check out the hotel and see what it offered and what what we liked about it i do remember there was a best western up near the camp we worked at near yosemite that had an indoor pool Ooh. and it was amazing and fun and it was a best western which i thought was hysterical so we have been doing this for many years and ever since you know we started working at universal we have been very fortunate to be able to check out all of their hotels either when they open or sometime after they open to really get a feel and share with our friends you know, this is what the hotel is like and so i can confidently say that i can compare all of the universal yeah. hotels and a few of the disney hotels though not as many and i think that has really been our focus at least once a year to go check out a hotel in the area and see what it's like. I mean, we have some Rosen hotels in the area as well that we've stayed at. We've had Avanti. We've had Wyndham. I mean, we've stayed at, you know, different hotels, not just the Universal and Lowe's hotels. So I, I would say that we're quite knowledgeable in the type of hotels and resorts in the areas that you can stay yeah. at and what they're like. Okay. And so far, 
what has been your favorite features in a hotel to do a staycation at? I would say that the the hotel itself needs to have a hot tub. I think that's the one of the top things that we try to look for when we are picking a hotel to go to. Pool is also very nice. We would really like a pool. But if there's other features, I think it's it's just a bonus. But it usually, when, when we have a staycation, we spend a lot of time in the room, decompressing, watching things, and then, you know, going to the pool and hanging out and reading and, and being in the hot tub or swimming or whatever. You know, yeah. that's our, our basic criteria when we're looking for a, a hotel so it's primarily about decompression definitely so yes. yeah that that helps you unwind now that may also change for some people because if you've got a family you definitely were going to need a pool you're going to need a lot of space in the hotel itself and i know that we just stayed at the dockside and it had a pretty sizable pool mm -hmm. yes uh, but we've also got cabana bay mm -hmm. and cabana bay not only has a really big pool but also has that lazy river which is my favorite thing yeah I've cabana bay actually has two pools a water slide on one pool and a lazy river on the other one mm -hmm. they do have a, at least one i believe they might have two hot tubs one for each pool area and that's that's just the pool areas right mm -hmm. it's next door to volcano bay which is like hi the largest pool area in the area so it's, it's yeah. that you can walk to volcano bay from cabana bay you can see it from your room cabana bay really is my favorite universal hotel and people always look at me like really like not the upper scale portofino and don't get me wrong i love portofino they have the most amazing hot tub ever with a waterfall but cabana bay Amenities wise, pool wise, is just my favorite. There, there are a couple cons to staying at Volcano Bay, but overall, generally, I love it. It is really the most bang for your buck mm -hmm. that you can have at this hotel. I mean, you're also looking at a place. Most places will have at least a, a minimal kind of gym, but they actually have a, a Jack Lalanne style mm -hmm. gym, yeah. and they have a bowling alley, yes. which just gives you so much to do there mm -hmm. and i'd say yes cabana bay is still my favorite mm -hmm. although the beds were a little bit better for me at least mm -hmm. uh, at dockside correct yeah same for me i will agree with that and also i think we talk about this a little bit in the video but you know dockside does have a table with chairs and a bench mm -hmm. Whereas Cabana Bay has like a sitting area to watch TV. And I think that's the pros and cons of it is Cabana Bay's furniture. While it's very interesting and kind of fascinating style really goes with the time period. The furniture is not the most comfortable. Mm -hmm. Bring your own pillows, but you're fine. But I do appreciate the fact that you can sit in an area meant to lounge Mm -hmm. and watch TV. Whereas in Dockside, if you wanted to watch TV all together, you had to all pile on the beds or move the chairs around in front of the TV in order to watch. And I think that was a little tricky, not as comfortable unless you're the type of person who likes lying in bed watching TV all the time. But I really liked the table at Dockside. So yeah. like I said, pros and cons of what you prefer when it comes to that. So I know it sounds like we're talking a lot about Cabana Bay here, which is, you know, funny, but I think that, you know, we can we can talk about the things that are generally things you find in most Universal hotels that are I budget would, friendly. I would also just say, once in your lifetime, you should always consider going to one of those nicer hotels, especially mm -hmm. Portofino. Just take somebody with you that you want to just walk and talk with mm -hmm. because it's a beautiful place. It really is, yeah. It's absolutely gorgeous. Hard Rock is great for those people who are, you know, looking for a little edgier. And Sapphire Falls, I would, I would not go to Sapphire Falls for a staycation. I, it's more like a conference hotel, I think, yeah. Sapphire Falls. Aventura was very cool and modern. I did not get to check out the pool area because there, I, I think they were doing maintenance or something. But it had a really cool rooftop bar. I thought that it was like a really interesting and modern decor hotel which i think is probably third on my list of hotels that i like you know if you like that kind of decor like i said there's like something for everybody it depends on what hotel you i like. feel like the aventura it's kind of like the modern expression of the same genetics of the contemporary hotel at disney it's right. very modern very sleek 
although this is much more sleek mm -hmm. in its design. Right, yeah. What have been some of your favorite, because we've done a lot of times where we've walked around the different hotels in Disney and kind of seen what Disney had to offer. Mm -hmm. Which one has been your favorite of the Disney hotels? Well, as far as hotels that I would like to stay at, but is my favorite would probably be Wilderness Lodge. It's been mm -hmm. the one I want to stay at the most. But my favorite hotel that I've ever stayed at at Disney is Art of Animation. Mm -hmm. We stayed in the cars section, I want to say. And the room theme was fantastic. And the way they thought everything out, there was like a table that turns into a Murphy bed. Like it was just, it was so well thought out. I think that would probably be my favorite one that I've ever stayed at. We've stayed at a couple of the value resorts, I believe, mm -hmm. also. My parents stayed at the Grand Floridian, so we saw that. I don't know. I'm not the type of person to be, like, all about the hoity-toity hotel. I am the type of person who wants to be entertained by a hotel, which is yeah. why I like cruises so much. It's just a floating hotel with a lot of yeah. things, right? I, I was kind of having the same thought earlier right. on. I'm like, really, when we're doing a staycation, it's the cruise that doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't go anywhere. Correct. That is yeah. correct. So let's talk about some ways that you can maximize your bucks yeah. uh, while staying safe in you know this time period that we live in. So first, let's talk about the the you know, traveling with COVID, I am immunocompromised. And for me, it, I do not go out of the house very often at all. I maybe once a month, if I have to, I will go out. So there was a, a certain amount of anxiety doing this, but I knew because I work for this company that I was going to be okay because I knew the measures that they take. I also knew that once I got to the hotel, I would not be leaving the room unless I needed to get food or go to the pool. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I wouldn't be coming in contact with people. So when you're when you first go in, they do a temperature check and they give you a wristband. Now, I will have to say that not everybody in your party does get this because my husband and I went in to check in and got the wristband. But then the other two people that were with us went in through a back entrance when we were going into the room and never got their temperature checked. So there is that kind of thing. But if you ever go down to the lobby and they see you don't have a wristband, I, I think they're supposed to check your temperature. Yeah. Now, I can also tell you, since that point that we were at the hotel, Corey and I have been to another hotel for a, a big sale that was going on mm -hmm. uh, from Coliseum of Comics. And... That hotel had actually blocked off all the entrances as entrances and forced you to go through the front door where they checked your temperature and gave you a right. wristband. Oh, very so good. each place kind of has its own different way of doing it. Uh, it was a really nifty device that kind of had a camera that would scan you. Mm. So you just had to put your face within that, that certain frame and it goes, okay, you're good. Oh, okay. It was okay. really interesting. So there's that first level. Um, they do have the safety glass when you're checking in mm -hmm. and when you go down to the food court and whatever. And then, you know, they, they make you wear your face masks all the time, except when you're in the pool and or eating. And then the last thing they do, which is both great and not great, is, although I don't know there's any way around it being not great, is that they limit the parties of the elevator to just your group. So so that's great because you're not really coming in contact with a lot of other people. However, there is a monster line right around 5 or 6 o'clock when everyone is getting their food for dinner or getting off the uh, shuttle buses from the parks when the parks are closing down. Mm -hmm. And the line does move swiftly, but it is long. And to me, I, I had this like inkling of well, does this kind of negate what's happening? Like, we're all standing here in this line trying to space out six people apart, but well, waiting to get on the elevator. <laughs> there's yeah. another issue going on there, and some hotels may not have that same level of problem. They'll still have that same problem. But one of the issues that was going on is that at the same time, all of this uh, housekeeping had to be done, and all the room service was being ordered and the hotel we were in did not have service elevators they only had customer elevators mm -hmm. so all of the housekeeping staff 
were shutting down elevators for their own use. Just one per bank, I think. I don't think yeah. it was more than that. But, you know, all of these things combined yeah. did make it a little hectic. But I don't think I ever waited more than maybe 10 minutes to get on an elevator. I mean, it looked like you were going to wait a lot longer, but I don't think it ever was really that long. It did take me a lot longer to go around to another bank and try that one out uh, so much so that when I got there and it had its own line I took the stairs and that was a mistake we were on the eighth floor <laughs> yes that is a mistake <laughs> all right so that's that pretty much as far as the mask safety they will not I don't think clean your room unless you ask them to if you ask for things like once we got so cold we asked for a couple extra blankets and they left them outside the door we didn't know they were there and we're like where are the blankets like an hour later we opened the door and they were on the ground we're like oh yeah contactless exactly <laughs> but they were also wrapped up in a plastic bag mm -hmm. for sanitation purposes right, exactly. which is really thoughtful I yeah think. the remote controls were wrapped up in plastic mm -hmm. so there was just a lot of things like that that were very thoughtful when it came to your safety i felt very safe i never really felt like i was gonna be catching anything really yeah me either okay so let's talk a little bit about budget when, yeah. when you're coming to these places. Now, I think one of the things that this, this particularly this hotel, but also Cabana Bay, have in their favor is that the rooms are definitely for families, especially if you have kids. Yeah. I would say that it is meant for that. The room that we stayed in and in the summer dockside was a two-bedroom suite. You could sleep up to six people in it, and there were three beds. And because it was two bedroom, that meant that, you know, you could have some people in a bedroom for privacy and then you have, you know, the other bedrooms out in the main room. Cabana Bay has the ability for a regular room. I think you can fit four people in the bedroom part and then at least one, maybe two people out in the living room because the couch folds out. But they also have larger suites that I haven't stayed in yet that are like a couple bedrooms so you can oh, fit nice. even more people. And that's in the newer towers towards Volcano Bay. So there, there is the ability to have all these people. And I think, for me personally, as someone who has tried to get bigger hotel rooms in other places, this is definitely a budget-saving plus for people with larger families. But it also is for us. I mean, there were four of us in our party, and that meant that me and my husband could have our own bed, and you and our friend Jose could have their own beds, uh -huh. and it was great because you didn't have to share we didn't have to share and at the same time he and i could stay up till midnight playing all sorts of video games on switch while you guys snoozed mm -hmm. a little bit earlier exactly and the other thing about cabana bay and and the summer dockside and surfside really because they're they're both pretty similar in the way the room is laid out is that they do have you know, a separate kitchen area where you you have a sink, a microwave, a fridge, and you can bring your own food. You can prepare your own food. You don't necessarily have to get whatever is being served in the parks mm -hmm. or the hotel or even in the surrounding areas. You can go to a grocery store to get stuff and make food. That is definitely a budget saving yeah. thing as well. I will say though, if you're at Cabana Bay, I do really like the variety of food they have. I know at at Dockside, they had some nice Mardi Gras themed stuff, uh, mm -hmm. and they do have their specialty chicken and waffles, which is really cool. Those things are not really like my cup of tea. I'm very much a picky eater. Yeah. But I think that the amount of variety they had was was good for a hotel like that. Also, I thought very reasonably priced. Yes, it Most was. Most of the entrees were like ten bucks which I would pretty much pay at other fast food places around. It was somewhere between 6 and $10 mm -hmm. for just about any major entree you wanted. And yeah, it wasn't just simply hamburgers and pizza. Mm -hmm. I, I thought that that was really thoughtful. And their salad offerings were actually oh, very good. They had really good salads. Like they were a huge bowl of salad. I think there were like two or three different types of salad and it was all wrapped individually. Mm -hmm. I just thought, oh, this is great. It's not like a salad bar that you have to weigh, which I think is what it was at Cabana Bay, but they may have changed it since COVID. And I think that's a, a positive change. Yes. And if we're going to talk about food, we might as well talk about beverages because mm -hmm. every time we go to a... Universal and Disney Resort for that matter, we get the refillable cup because it's about, I don't know how much it is, to be honest. I, I think it's like 
you buy the cup on the refills you can get it for a 24 hour period at a time but for me and my husband and keep in mind we did get a slight discount but for me and my husband to both get a cup for two days worth of refills it was 25 bucks which i mean and you get a souvenir cup <laughs> yeah <laughs> the, the souvenir cup at, at dockside was not bad it, it was rather pretty it was very wooden mm -hmm. but they have the most updated version of the freestyle machine right they which do which no longer has the like push in manual button to pour mm -hmm. which i've always found a little clunky right it now has a touch screen mm -hmm. on it as well as the touch screen for the button which it, it's a lot smoother of an interface mm -hmm. so it's all freestyle not only soda but also tea and beverages like the sparkling fruity beverages that don't have any sugar in it, they have that too, which is amazing. They have separate places to get coffee and hot chocolate. That That's all included. So I think that having that, I mean, you're, you're pretty much set. You can go down and get drinks anytime you want, as long as you don't mind waiting for the elevators. <laughs> Just told you about. So that's a, definitely a budget thing. You might think, oh, well, you know, you can save money and bring your own. Totally. Yeah. But this is just another, I think, something you just don't really need to think about. You know, you can just get it when you're there and use it all the time. Yeah. It's it's very easy. And then you can always come back later and bring the same cup and they'll just charge you to refill it. Mm -hmm. And I think it saves you a little bit of money that way. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a lot of the more apparent ways of saving money. But... <laughs> Let's talk about the fact that, you know, when we're at a hotel, we tend to sit there and just watch movies mm -hmm. just to chill. Uh, there are a lot of hotels that I've stayed at that it's very hard to plug in a tablet or whatever to watch Netflix. And there are some hotels that I've stayed at that you can just log into the Netflix that's already at the hotel and you can watch your stuff. In this case, we tried to do it on a tablet, but I think it was a problem with our cord and not yeah. the TV. So my husband went home, since we literally live like 15 minutes away, and grabbed the DVD player that we have in our bedroom and plugged it into the TV, and we legit just watched DVDs while we were there instead of the TV. I think this might not be something that everyone wants to do, but it definitely is a budget saving kind of thing that you could do if you absolutely wanted to. And there have been hotels. Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I remember the Aventura had it, where you could log in directly to your Netflix account from the television screen mm -hmm. and it, it goes okay cool you can now watch Netflix right here on this screen instead right. yeah and when you check out it logs you out right I was kind of disappointed they didn't have that on this particular hotel but what they do have besides regular TV is they have like an on-demand movie system which had some good movies like Ant-Man and Venom and Crazy Rich Asians, which is one of my favorites. And, you know, there were some movies that I hadn't really heard of before, but you can go and watch those on demand as well. When we go to St. Augustine sometimes, though, it feels like we can't get any of the stuff. It's always just cable TV. And yeah. we end up watching some, like, you know, HGTV tiny homes or mm -hmm. Forged in the Fire or something like that because there's nothing else. Excuse me, I sometimes watch Forged in Fire to go to bed. Don't I'm judge not me. saying it's a bad show. I'm just saying variety. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess I, I am happy that you can. Something else that you can do while you're staying at these hotels that don't cost you any money at all is ride the shuttle to City Walk. It is included with your price. You don't have to have a park ticket. You can just get on the shuttle and go on over to City Walk, do a little bit of shopping. You can eat there. You can watch a movie. You can go mini golfing. I almost said you could go bowling. You can't go bowling. But you can go to Cabana Bay and go bowling. Mm -hmm. And I think you can take the shuttle over there as well. So that that's all the stuff that we can I can think of for while we're at in Orlando. But we've also been doing a lot of these sorts of kinds of vacations over in St. Augustine, other tourist towns mm -hmm. that we don't have access to all these discounts because of Universal. Right. What kind of tactics do you have for finding good deals of entertainment and taking care of yourself while you're in a place like that? Well, we did go to St. Augustine last October and it was a little bit different because normally we like to stay on the mainland where downtown is, but this time we stayed 
on the island, which was, I believe, a little bit quieter than being downtown, less traffic, etc. I would say that a lot of the same tips apply. You can, you know, bring your food, find a hotel that has a fridge that you can keep your stuff in. Sometimes it's really hit or miss because of the time of year and maybe events that are going on, what's actually available. We did stay at, a, I believe it was a Hampton Inn in October and it did have a pool and it was also right off the beach and it was very nice. But I do think that if you're going to want to go to all of these different attractions that they have, you're gonna want to look up the discounts that they have for other affiliations. For example, AAA, a lot of them have student discounts. And I would say just start by making your list of things you wanna go do and then contacting them directly or looking at their website. Because a lot of these places don't really have websites because it's, you know, the first city. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, they, they still don't, a lot of them aren't that modern. So you wanna really contact them directly, see if they have those discounts that you can utilize. But I would say, you know, in, in things like that, don't be afraid to just relax. Don't feel like you have to do everything all at once. I think that's a lot better way to be budget conscious. Also find things that are all inclusive. You can take the trolley tour and you can see everything on the trolley tour and all you have to do is just pay for the trolley tour. You aren't necessarily stopping and going in everywhere, but at least you can see the city and you don't have to drive. So that's a plus. Um, and you don't have to park, which in a lot of cities, that can be a problem. Yeah, exactly. Not just getting parked, but like you'll have to pay for parking. Mm -hmm. I think as far as like saving money, that might be a whole other podcast episode. So comment if you want it. Where, you know, I teach you how to organize your trips and how to plan them out. Because that's really what being budget conscious and having a staycation is all about. You know, it's... It's making sure that you are covered so you don't have to think about anything and you can just go and have a good time. Mm -hmm. I really I suggest that you all in your own area find a place where you can go safely that you can decompress in. I think right now it's a very hard time for a lot of people and they really do need these times. I'm especially feeling bad for people right now in the South, oh Texas, Oklahoma, even people up in the north, they're all getting hit with storms. I mean, I, I don't even know all the storms going around the U.S. We here in Florida, we're getting rain, and that's about it. And I count myself lucky. I do understand the being without power thing because we're in Hurricane Central over here. But, you know, when we get past that, definitely take time for yourself. And find a way to decompress somehow. Mm -hmm. And make sure that you are taking time for yourself no matter what even if it's in your own home and your staycation has to do with you going to your bedroom and saying guess what the next three hours it's just me mm -hmm. doing what i want to do and, and it is kind of an interesting thing you know you i believe there's science behind it that being stuck in the same place does really bring your mood down it really does do bad things to you so compression causes depression and you mm -hmm. do need to get out you do need to take some time and just do sometimes nothing. Yeah. And maybe even get yourself some sort of audio that helps you relax. Maybe listen to a podcast that you've always wanted to listen to that just sparks joy. So thank you for listening to Elated Geek. Follow us on social media for pictures and more info on things we talked about in today's podcast. You can find Lainey on at Zany Laney or me at One True Hazard. You can also find at Elated Geek on our Instagram. And you can also find Elated Geek Tweets on Twitter. If you want to go to a website, we have www.elatedgeek.com. Links for these are in the show notes. If you want to help us to continue to bring you new and exciting things to nerd out about, please consider donating to our coffee account. The link is in the show notes and every donation is accepted with total appreciation for your support in us. Send us your geek obsessions or topics that you want us to experience and talk about in future episodes. Email us at share at elatedgeek.com. And until next time, geek out. <laughs>